what's up, you guys? Ross out the out here in Singapore. Thank you so much for joining me back on the Night Owl podcast. As you guys know, this is full of my ideas about life, my opinions, my beliefs. And as I learn new things, I'm sharing all of my epiphanies with you as well. A lot of times they come from conversations, they come from books, from movies, from songs, you name it, it you know, it just hits me and then I gotta say something about it, right? So I'm actually really, really glad that I have created this platform for myself. And as much as I want to talk about, you know, the things that matter to me and the things that I think are wrong or right, I also know that the opposite also is true for other people. People don't see things the way that I see them. And I'm okay with that. I accept the fact that two things can occur at the same time and be complete polar opposites, but they don't make one belief better or worse than the other. The only thing that I judge anything by is whether or not you hurt people or not. Um, For a long time, I used that as my my yardstick, so to speak. I made sure that I I thought through all of my decisions and um, only decided to do something if it did not hurt many people. And I was not allowed to be part of that process. I couldn't be in that in that body count. I had to make sure that I wasn't hurting anybody. And I, I had to make sure that I wasn't pleasing any one person. And I wasn't allowed in that body count either. So I'm trying really hard to make sure that I do the best I possibly can in every decision that I take in my life because it matters to me. It really matters to me the kind of life that I live and I can't afford to just go with the flow. I have to live intentionally with purpose. I'm trying, okay? A lot of times I do fall short, but it also upsets me when I see that other people are not as open-minded or accepting as I am. And I get it, okay? Everyone to each his own. Not everyone's on the journey like I am. Not everyone's on the same uh, level of this Jumanji journey as I am. And that's okay. I get it. I understand. And hopefully there will come a time where your eyes will open a little bit and you will understand a little bit more of what's going on in the world. But until then, I'm not about to tell you you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. There's no way that can exist. You suck at life. That's not what I'm here to say. What I would like for people to do, though, is accept that the people around them are capable of change. I know there is a saying that, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks and uh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. And with that kind of vein of thinking, it's understood almost that people, once they've done something a couple of times, they're incapable of change. They're just going to be like that the rest of their lives. But I also know that some of us depend on other people never changing. We need to know who the bad guys are. And sometimes when the bad guys have like an epiphany moment and they wake up and suddenly they're trying really hard to be a hero instead, we're not okay with that. It's almost like we get upset with, oh my gosh, are you serious? Like you were this evil, terrible person. Are you telling me you really had a change of heart and you changed for the better? A lot of times we will not allow them to be better because we're so used to them being the villain. A lot of times we don't want them to become better, so we put them in situations to prove that they really haven't changed that much, which means we're baiting them, right? And even then, sometimes we question all of their changes. We get mad at, oh, well, you didn't pay the price. You didn't do penance. You didn't serve time to prove that you understood that, you know, what you did was wrong. You can't get off scot-free. There was no retribution in this lifetime. What the hell? Like, I'm not, I'm not okay with that. But what does retribution look like? What, is it, what does it look like for someone who maybe was racist for a long time to suddenly have reformed somehow, right? And maybe you didn't see the pain that they went through to have this realization and this complete 180 turnaround, but they did. And if you weren't witness to it, did it actually happen? It's that, that cliche, right? If a tree falls in the woods and you didn't hear it, did it really make a sound? All of that nonsense. If someone went through a divine storm, if someone went through a come to Jesus moment or Moses or Buddha or whoever you want to call, right? If someone had a real life altering moment and they questioned all their beliefs and they found, you know what? The things I was believing and hang on to, not that great, wasn't really serving a lot of people, hurting a lot of people actually, and maybe I should change. And once they change, what's to say that their pain was not good enough for you to feel justified in accepting them for having changed completely differently. That's the part I don't understand. That's the part that pisses me off. I would like to think people are capable of change. I would like to think, unfortunately, if the situation becomes dire enough, they will actually, because they have no other choice, open their minds up to the possibility of other realities existing and then allow the change to happen. Most of us will go fight the change. Why? Because we don't like change. I don't like changes in my schedule. I don't like changes in the brand of coffee I drink. I get mad when, you know, certain coffee that I was drinking suddenly went out of business and I can't, or business, <laughs> it's out of stock and I can't find it anymore. I have to go find a new coffee. I don't like that. It's simple, stupid change, but I get mad. I fight it. 
because I don't like change. And if I'm that simple, I'm pretty sure all of us are simple and basic at that same level, okay? The point being, though, I am capable of change, and so are you, which also means some people really, truly are capable of change, and I would rather give them the benefit of the doubt and let them prove to me on their own terms that they really haven't changed that much, rather than set them through like a Herculean obstacle course, you know, the 12 tasks of asterisks or whatever, to prove that they really haven't changed. Because then, how am I any better than they are? I am determined to make sure that the world knows they're this horrible person. Why are we so incapable of letting people change? I think I talked about this in another podcast podcast episode. You see, my throat chakra is all messed up. My, my tongue is getting in the way. I can't even say the things properly because I'm upset. Whew. Okay. I think I've mentioned this in another podcast as well. There is this concept of crabs in a barrel where one crab finds a way to climb out of the barrel and as they're climbing out another crab will grab onto its leg and try to pull it back down either pull it back down or try to use them as leverage to climb themselves out as well but in the process they're pulling everybody back down crabs in a barrel and i feel like sometimes in our society as much as we want change and we want people to be great and we want people to understand that you know the casteism is wrong and racism is wrong and feminism is you know not always what it seems to me because some people say one thing and they do another maybe you know uh, misogyny and rape and all those things you know you want people to understand these are terrible horrible no good very bad things but when someone says you know what I saw the error of my ways and I've changed I'm saved I found Jesus I found Moses I found religion I found spirit I found a way to be better than I was before suddenly we want to question the change oh really seriously it's not that easy are you think it's that easy you could just like wake up one morning and you're better Sometimes the change is building. Sometimes the change is building so much that you have something hit you right square in the middle of your face, right? And you have no choice but to acknowledge that it's there. And finally, when you acknowledge what is there, you have to have the discussion about what's real and what's not. And what were you doing all this time until you realized that this was actually the reality that you have been blind to all this time. And once you realize what the blind spot is, let's say you do have the courage to be brave and change it. How dare someone come question that? I don't understand why we can't hold space for people to evolve. Isn't that what we're hoping? Don't we all go through this this phase of, oh my gosh, you know, I evolved and had to let go of some friends. and I feel really, really guilty for having let go of those friends. But they really just were not talking about the things that I was interested in anymore. And I kind of had to leave them behind. At that point, you want people to understand when you walk away, when you level up, when you're doing something different from what you've always done. But let the shoe be on the other foot and suddenly you're like, oh, come on. I know what change is. I've been through hell and back and I know what change is. You haven't seen the darkness yet. You haven't accepted the darkness yet. You haven't haven't been through shit. How is that possible? It really boggles the mind. And I see it every day, every day. This Black Lives Matter situation that led to the famine in Yemen awareness and then suddenly lgbtq pride month all these things that are coming to the forefront about you know how people are just treated like crap you guys they're human beings their lives it's terrible it's horrible it's just a travesty honestly i don't understand how we treat each other like this but why is it when something as big as black lives matter happens that suddenly the worst of us comes out in the course of the activism. One person who's never spoken up before suddenly speaks up and they're like, you know what? Yes, I understand this concept. I understand this particular fight and I don't want to see this carry on the way it is. And maybe they didn't use the right words and maybe they, you know, they were on the fence about how they came out even, right? But they did something, they tried something for the very first time because all this time they were too terrified to say anything at all. They say something and suddenly there are 50,000 comments about how they said it wrong, they did it wrong, they shouldn't have opened their mouths at all, and how dare they speak about these things because look at the past decisions they've had. Look at the life they led before now. Come on. It's like you won't let people evolve either. And I hate that about us. Where does this come from? Shouldn't we be happy that people say they're changed? And let their actions speak for themselves and let them say they've changed and be happy. Yo, you know what? Great. Good for you. You got it? Great. Keep going. 
And then if they do fall from grace, allow them to fall from grace and watch how they pick themselves up. If they pick themselves up, watch all of that. It's not for you to judge every little thing. All these keyboard warriors and all their damn comments. Seriously. I'm sorry, I'm a little upset. Can you tell? I want for us to have the space to evolve. I want for people to understand that it's real easy and safe for you to poke holes in someone else's journey. It's real easy for you to suddenly be like, oh, well, you say you're doing something. Well, how much is enough? Are you fixing it? Yeah, in her little corner of the world, she's fixing it. In his little corner of the world, he's fixing it to the best of his ability. Whenever he feels safe enough to stand up without getting shot down just for standing up, he's going to fix whatever he can. And when he finds a group of people that are willing to stand up when he stands up, he's going to stand up more often. And when he feels a little bit more confident that he's saying the right words in the right way in the right tone, he's going to do it even more often. So for all of you out there who are doing the best you can, I applaud you. For all of you out there who can't believe that it's possible for people to change and you're worried about people joining a bandwagon or two, or maybe just, you know, riding the wave because it's a hashtag that'll get them views, what? let them be. Let them be. They'll figure it out. You pointing it out doesn't mean you're being an activist either, though. You pointing it out doesn't mean you're actually standing up for the right things. There is a difference between criticizing and shutting people down and educating them on where they're going wrong. I was really proud today. I saw uh, Subash Music stand up for uh, a po- stand up against a podcast that was claiming freedom of speech, and they were just talking about whatever the fuck they wanted to talk about. And okay, yeah, they are allowed to. But when they say something wrong and a bunch of people come in and they say, hey, you know what? That's a little racist. That's a little sexist. That's a little off a little bit. You need to check yourself. They can't just wave it off as, oh, no, you're missing the point. You need to listen to this podcast from the very first episode going forward to know who we are and what we're about. That's that's not owning up to the fact that you may have made a mistake. That's not accepting the fact that, you know what? There are other viewpoints that may differ from yours. Now, explain your position? Sure, perfect. But don't hide behind this freedom of right, the freedom of speech situation. The freedom of speech, in my opinion, means that you have the right to speak what is on your mind. And at the same time, once those words have escaped your lips, it is someone else's right as well to speak their mind about what you said. At which point, you should be having a discussion about how you can understand where the other person is coming from. Whether you agree to his point of view or not is not in question here. Can you accept that his reality also exists? And from his reality, do you see anywhere that you could improve yourself so we can all advance as a collective? That's my point. All of us are bound to be wrong at some point. All of us are bound to say the wrong thing at some point. All of us are bound to sound freaking ignorant as hell. I know if you would put me in front of a TV that's playing a soccer match, I'm going to be ignorant as hell. I will follow the colors. I have no idea who plays whom and what player is what. I don't care. It's not my forte. But for you to get up and yell at me for not knowing the difference between man, you, and... I'm not even going to say it because I have no idea, okay? City and whatever, something, okay? (laughs) For you to get mad at me for not knowing better... And yell at me saying things like, oh, well, you have the access to education on the internet. You should know. Yeah, but if it isn't, do- doesn't interest me and if it's not a problem to me, why would I look it up? Why would I bother to learn? If it doesn't matter to me, why would I bother to learn? Honestly, Black Lives Matter, racism, casteism, sexism, all that stuff, a lot of us turn a blind eye until it bothers us. And then when we see a lot of blacked out uh, posts and a lot of, you know, um, Uh, stories that are being shared around talking about you know this is going on and this is not the way you handle this and if I'm friends with someone that has been um, abusive to you let me know so I can send them a message too that I'm not on board with this kind of information or this kind of behavior it's not until those things happen that we suddenly were like oh shit you know what maybe I should read up on this maybe I should figure out what's going on maybe I should find out what this conversation is about a lot of us have that privilege too Until something bothers us, there is no necessity to dig into what it is, where it came from, how it started, why it's a problem. That it's a problem. So for those of you out here 
listening still. Thank you so much for joining me. I know I talked about a lot of stuff. I've been quite angry today. But in the meantime, I'm not saying anything that you shouldn't already know. You've seen it. In the last month or so, you've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. The darkest of humanity has reared their heads thinking that they know something. Trying to criticize the rest of us who are trying our best to learn about the situation and educate other people as well. We will never know all there is to know about any situation. It's always evolving. There's always something else new going on. Lynchings, y'all. Come on. 2020, we still got lynchings going on? You gonna pass it off as a damn suicide? Are you crazy? Please, be mindful that other people have differing viewpoints. They're allowed to have differing viewpoints. If you see that they're missing something, let them know where their blind spot is. Educate them. Do not criticize them. Do not min did diminish them. I think I've said this in another live video before as well. Shutting them down is almost the same as telling them that they don't have to evolve. Because guess what? Shutting them down makes them cling to their beliefs a little bit tighter. They're not going to change. They're further from change once you criticize them. You take a little bit of time, you send them love and compassion and explain, you know what, let me put it to you in, a t in terms that you might understand so that they could maybe really see a different perspective. And then you have the possibility of converting another heart. If you have any questions about anything I've said today, please drop me a comment. If I said anything offensive, drop me a comment. I want to hear from you. Right now, I'm speaking from the heart. I'm, I'm speaking off the cuff. I have no notes in front of me. I'm just talking to you, whatever is just coming through my mind at the moment. It is freedom of speech, which also means you have the right to contest me, to tell me I'm wrong, to tell me I offended you. Let me know so I can be better. Because the only person I'm in competition with is who I was five minutes ago. And if you can make me better, oh my God, I'm all for it. But in the meantime, Watch how you behave. Watch how you speak to people. There is a difference between activism and just standing on a soapbox because you can. Let's change the world together. It's going to take a lot of love and compassion. It has never been about power. It's never been about ego. This is better. That is better. This is bigger. That is worse. Nothing like that. People have tried it so many times. And yeah, they strike fear into the hearts of men around them. But guess what? They're also known as the villains in history for the most part. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, right? That Hitler thought he was a freaking hero, cleansing his race or whatever. To the rest of us, we know better. To the Jews, he was the fucking devil. And if they hadn't stood up and if they hadn't come forward and if the survivors had not told us what the experience was like during the Holocaust, how would we know for certain that he was just living some other fantasy life, some other reality? I need you guys to think more, listen more than you speak. I want you to speak up, but listen first. Learn, research, look it up for yourself. I've always told everyone around me, question everyone that comes to you. Question every piece of information that's fed to you. Never trust anyone's information but your own. Which means if you get it from 10 different sources, okay, you have a pretty good idea of what the actual story is. If you get it from one source, and that's your, like, your, your favorite horse that you want to ride till the end of time, chances are there's plenty of stuff that would refute that information too. Check your sources. Research for yourself. Question everything, please, for you. So you can actually be educated. Yes, in a time of free information like we have right now, free access to information like we have right now, there's no excuse for us to be ignorant. But privilege means you don't have to know that information until it bothers you. And right now, I'm hoping it bothers you. I love you guys and I'll catch you again soon.